Hegeman uh, from from GE Aviation. Of course, you guys do a lot of good in the state of Ohio. We appreciate it. Employing over 8,500 people, investing more than 35 million in aviation technology. So thank you for being here. Um, I, I, where I want to focus my questioning today is on uh, the question of um, sustainable aviation fuel and the subsidies for it. So Mr. Welsh, I'm going to direct my questions to you. And, and I guess the, the first thing that I'd ask, just to sort of establish the baseline here, um, do, do, do you believe that it should be the policy of our government um, to play, that, to, that, that we should be encouraging commercial airlines to pay climate reparations for, um, for some of their conduct and some of their business activities? Um, thank you, Senator. Well, uh, I would be speaking in a personal capacity here and not on uh, behalf of the FAA, but I would say, uh, no, I, I don't believe so. Thank you. So my understanding uh, is that, you know, climate reparations, um, sometimes called emissions offsets, are where effectively the airlines pay uh, money to a broker, that broker then pays money theoretically to, you know, some, some sort of reforestation project that theoretically reduces the amount of, of carbon in the atmosphere. And my understanding is you've, you've been uh, pretty supportive of emission offsets in the past. Is that right? Um, well, uh, emissions offsets are one tool, but I would disagree that they are climate reparations. Um, and, I, and I would take, even take a step further back and when we look at re reducing emissions, uh, you know, the focus is on where are you removing emissions from the atmosphere. And so um, how you do that in a rigorous way is, is the focus that I would place on that. Yeah, whatever we would call them. I mean, we're talking about basically penalizing commercial airlines for having certain business practices in the past. Uh, I think it's, 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 it's not an especially good use of resources, especially given what we've learned about the ways in which these alleged carbon offsets or climate offsets very often don't lead to the carbon offsets they're meant to they're meant to to, to provide. So, uh, just ju just just a point of issue there. Um, one more direct question: Are you supportive of requiring the United States to submit uh, to ICO's recommendations, ICAO's recommendations on emissions, including transitioning our entire commercial fleet to run on sustainable aviation fuel? So, so um, this administration has put forward the U.S. Aviation Climate Action Plan. Um, which sets out a, a U.S. goal of transitioning to uh, net zero emissions for aviation by 2050. Sure. Uh, and that includes supporting uh, work at ICAO. And in fact, in the last administration, um, we began implementing the ICAO's carbon offsetting measure in March of 2019. Uh, and this administration intends to uh, continue to implement that. So, so Mr. Walsh, I, I guess one concern I have with this is when you're talking about carbon emissions and the effect on the environment, uh, an emission in China or anywhere else is the same as an emission in, in the United States of America. It has the same effect um, according, uh, according to the concern that you're raising. Why are we doing so much to follow ICAO's recommendations when the Chinese themselves are not doing very much? And if you think about the fact that China is the dirtiest economy in the world, they emit about two times as much carbon as we do. Why are we effectively penalizing the American aviation industry while we don't require or even attempt to force the Chinese to do it the same to their aviation industry? So um, thank you. And, and, and I think this is a really important point and question. So the work that we've done at, at the International Civil Aviation Organization, um, which includes China as a member, it's fundamental that they uh, actually do participate and that the, the uh, playing field is level. And to date, China has, despite uh, raising concerns, they have been participating in the um, program at ICAO, but that is something that we're monitoring and, and following closely and will address if we see that they are not complying because we would not want to hold U.S. airlines to a different standard than Chinese airlines. So you're saying the Chinese have followed the ICAO guidelines? Yes, to date they have. Okay. Uh, we'll probably follow up on that because I'd like to understand that a little bit better. That's not my understanding, but happy to be happy to be proven wrong there. Um, you know, my 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 final point here, I guess, my, my fear here with all things China and the United States when it comes to these international uh, programs is that we often make these commitments and we follow through on these commitments. I don't know if we're trying to be good global citizens or we're just trying to honor our word, uh, but very often these voluntary commitments are not followed by by the communist Chinese. And in particular, 
you know, a very real worry I have is, you know, we all believe in technology and we all believe in the importance of moving an American industry uh, into the technological future. But if we allow the Chinese to operate their industrial economy more cheaply than in the United States, we're offshoring the very basis of technological innovation. You can't have technological innovation if you're offshoring so much of your industry to China. Uh, if we're making American industry more expensive and we're making Chinese industry cheaper, then that strikes me as a really bad deal for American consumers, a really bad de deal for American technologists, and ultimately a really bad deal for our national security. Uh, so we'll follow up on that point, but appreciate your answers to the question, Mr. Welsh. Senator Warnock. Thank you so, so very much, um, Madam Chair. In, in September 2021, 